hi guys once again welcome to my channel so today i'm gonna tell you what's the process for applying document evaluation guys this is the second step first step is to get the nap priority then only you can go to a document evaluation so once you get the nap ID, you can apply for a document evaluation for the NAPRA ID, I already mentioned the link. You can watch the video to get the NAPRA ID. So here you just go to a PBC Canada. Then just click on document evaluation. So it will take you to the this page. So this page will have a general information. What's the requirement? what's the requirement documents how much time it's gonna take everything so just go to apply applying for a document evaluation click on it so there you're gonna see two things link to online application and then form 200 so basically first of all i'm gonna tell you about the form 200 so this form is just when you authorizing any organization uh, to apply on your basis to a BBC for a document evaluation. If you're applying yourself, you don't have to fill this form. So this form looks like this. Basically, you are authorizing someone like the in any organization. You need to provide the information about the organization. And you also need to mention their address. So again, if you're applying yourself, you don't have to fill this form. Then just click on link to online application. So first, before creating an account, it will tell you what's the requirement. Basically, you need a valid visa or a MasterCard. Guys, again, you must have an APRA ID to, to, to fill this form. So if you don't know how to get the APRA ID, please watch my first video. The link for video is in the description. So first of all, first of all, you have to do the online portion. Once you did the online portion, you need to print that application. Then on that application, you need to place your photos as well as you need to sign that also. Once you did it, then you need to email or basically email to the PBC. For example, if you did only online portion, but do not send the PBC the paper application, they're not gonna go ahead with your application. So automatically your application will be withdrawn and you also will be charged for a $150 Canadian fees. And just guys, you can apply for a document evaluation and evaluating exam applications together. Yeah, you can do it. So once you apply online for a document evaluation, PBC will gonna email your PBC ID number within a uh, five business days. Basically, they email within you know, three days. So once you get that number, you need to fill that online application. You need to mention your PBC ID number. Yeah, guys, if you have all documents submit on the time, you can do two things together document evaluation as well as the evaluating exam. So just create a link, click on a create profile, it will take you to this page. So they will ask your basic information your first name, last name, date of birth, where are you living currently. So I'm just gonna put a surname student, first name first. You guys also need to mention Mr. Mrs. or Miss. Guys, for example, in case you don't have a surname, you just have a first name, you can put a dot. That's it. You don't have to write anything else. Just put a dot and put everything on in your first name. It's just only in the case if you don't have any surname. Or you just write everything in your first name basically look on look at your passport 
the part is written on the passport then it's gonna ask for your address so where are you living currently so if i'm living in egypt then i'm gonna provide a home address of egypt or basically if i'm living in canada then i'm just gonna provide a home address for canada so i'm just gonna write my address 25 george street they're gonna ask you about the city country province and the postal code guys again this is your home address where are you living currently so if you're living in Egypt you need to provide the information about your home address of Egypt guys just make sure you fill everything properly like properly means like correct information then you need to provide your telephone number and email number so email it's mandatory to provide the telephone you can provide on it's not mandatory so before providing a telephone always mention your area code so plus one for canada if i'm living in if i'm living in india i'm going to provide plus nine one and then phone number basically they don't connect you contact you through this phone number they always contact you by your email so one so your email id is gonna be your username guys just yeah so once you fill the email id it's it's also gonna be your username oh sorry for that yeah just make sure you fill everything correct otherwise your application will not go ahead I see your email address is automatically your username. Then you need to provide your date of birth. Guys, just see the format. So first you have to write the date, then month, then the year. So basically you don't have to provide the PBC ID number because it's your first time, so you don't have to unless you have the pbc id number from the past you can leave this option like a blank and just go and create a password it it needs to be seven to eight letters or a number or a special numbers it, or it can be combination of everything just have that password which you can remember easily Then you click can click on submit yeah guys so whatever the star indicates that it needs to be filled mandatory that this is the step which you need to needs to be done mandatory so you can see after surname you're gonna see star so we have to write our surname for example in telephone you don't need to write it on anything like it's your option Yeah, guys just make sure you provide everything correct otherwise your application will not go ahead yeah once you click the summit then it will take you to the other page in which will you will have to provide your education as well as the licensing record education so from where you get the pharmacy for example i'm gonna put a chip then I'm gonna choose the university. I'm gonna just choose any random university. Yeah, so they always provide the list of the universities from that country. Guys, in, in case you can't find your name of your university, just choose other. Then you have to mention your the name of the university. Yeah, guys, you don't have to scare from the stuff like this is easy one i will say basically maximum times they have the name of the university in your in the list then you have to provide the graduation date what's the month and what's the year so basically what is your degree name bachelor of pharmacy bachelor of pharmaceutical science for example you did the diploma and then you also need to provide that information like first diploma then the bachelor 
Guys, if you're licensed in your home country, then you need to provide this licensing record. If not, then you then you can leave this part. For example, I'm licensed in Egypt, then I'm gonna choose this select licensing country Egypt. Then I'm gonna choose the licensing body also. For example, which was the licensing body in Egypt? I'm just gonna type it A B C D. So if you are licensed more than one place, then you have to provide the information for both places. Guys, if this is only when you are licensed somewhere else, other than the tenant, huh? Yeah, I'm just gonna leave this one blank. I'm just gonna keep it easy. Then just click on next. I just guys make sure you have a proper information. Yeah. Sorry for that. I just forgot to mention province. Yeah, guys. So before going the next step, always make sure you have fill everything proper and correct information. Then just mention your postal code. Postal code depends upon your home address. For example, it can be numbers, it can be letters. Then just click on next button. Guys, as I mentioned previously, NEPRA ID is mandatory. It's mandatory. You can guys can also watch my video how to get the NEPRA ID. The NEPRA ID is the first step. Yeah, for NAPRA ID, it costs you $340. Yeah, guys, you can watch my video how to get the NAPRA ID. Yeah, guys, if your information is wrong or in a wrong format, you, you can go ahead. Just click on next. It will take you to the payment page. Then you if you if you want to do some changes you can go to back to forum or if you're okay then you can proceed to payment so yes the total cost for this exam is for the evaluation thing is 675 dollars canadian dollars so either you can pay by visa card or a mastercard You have to provide the address like what the address on your uh, bank statements i'm just gonna leave this page so this is the final step for the online application once you fill everything proper you can just click on pay and then after this pvc will give you an email send you an email with a pvc id number yeah guys so in a case you you did something wrong in the online application but you already pay everything you can make some changes in your paper application so you don't have to worry if you did some mistakes in the online application there's always option to change that information in the paper application so once you pay everything that's that then you have to wait for the pvc they will email you the pvc id number they usually email within the three to five days like three to five business days. So once you got that uh, PBC ID number, then you're gonna print that application. Then we're gonna see what's the other document required. Just go to document evaluation. Yeah guys, just come back on like from where we started this link to online application. So there are some documents which need to require to see or support your identity, your degree, transcript, everything. So once you have completed everything, application and roles and everything, it will the PBC will send you an email with a confirmation that okay they receive everything. Yeah guys, you can apply for 
document evaluation and the validating exam together. So if you did everything right, you can sit in your evaluating exam. Yeah, guys. So within the six weeks, they always send an email that they they receive your application. This email does not confirm that your application is okay and you can sit in the exam. They just tell you that okay, we receive your application. Then they are gonna take another eight weeks to verify everything. For example, if you did not receive any email within the six week from the the PPC, always make sure you check with your courier, like the Canada Post. For example, you use the bureau letter FedEx that they deliver uh, your documents to the right address. Yes, guys, and the other thing, always check your email. Always, like on the regular basis, always check your email once a day. Now you need uh, some documents which, which will support your identity. So basically, you can use your uh, valid passport. Yes, guys, it should not be expired passport. Or you can use your birth certificate, Canadian citizenship card, or your marriage certificate. And then you need a documents to provide your, which will say, okay, you did the graduation. So it is gonna be degree, your transcript, and the licensing statements. So your transcripts can be have a different name in your home country. Like in India, we always say it's a DMC. So with a printed application, you need these documents to support your identity as well as your graduation and the licensing thing. So guys, in Canada, we only have a two languages, French or English. So you don't have to submit your original documents, but you need to provide us certified copies. Guys, certified copies. Not your original documents. For example, in, in any case, your document is not in either French or English. It's in your home language. Then you need a translation like an affidavit which exactly translated everything either into English or French so for this translation you must have a from some have a must someone who is government appointed or officially translator so guys every page of the translation must be signature and the stamp by your official translator that's every page Yeah, so your everything, every document must be in either English or French. And the translation must be original, guys. It should not be just the copies. So in a case you don't have a credit card or you just don't know how to how to pay the pay online. In that circumstances, you can email PBC info at pbc.ca then they will that you know what's gonna be happen in the next case basically they always ask you to make a bank draft so yes guys you need then two identical passport acceptable photographs and on the back of the photographs, they must there must be a date taken, stamp or written on a back of the by the photographer. And guys must they must have been taken within the last twelve months. So always try to use the fresh photos. And yes, one one of the photo you're gonna paste on the application, 
and the one of the uh, photo you just need to staple it so yes the pvc can see so guys this is the list who can certify your documents it can be lawyer it can be commissioner of for oath notary or embassy consulate official they must stamp or seal or signature the documents and their license number also required so in the presence of your witness you have to print that application like you can print the application in advance but in the presence of your witness you need to sign it and your witness gonna fill the city date name and his signature and profession guys make sure your witness do this thing they must fill the city date name signature and the profession so the document which support your identification are either valid passport birth certificate i always say use your passport like sometimes birth certificates is not in english it's in like in your home language then you need a home translator like who can translate your birth certificate into english therefore i always go say like go with your passport with a valid passport this should not be expired so for the canadians you you can't just submit you can't you can't use your pr card as a primary identification you must submit your passport or a birth certificate For example, guys, your name has been changed after your marriage, then you need to provide the marriage certificate. In special cases, guys, if you have been married more than once, then you need to submit a marriage documents for both marriages as well as the divorce paper for each marriage. Along with the marriage certificate, you need to also submit the change of name certificate. Yeah, this this step is a little bit difficult yeah so so they're gonna pvc gonna track your son name before and after the marriage yes guys you have to submit your marriage as well as the divorce paper for each marriage yeah this is just a lengthy process guys like the document evaluation step is really lengthy process but it's not difficult i will definitely say that yeah guys so for certifying your documents this is the only list who can do it you can't do it from your doctor no you can't do it just choose any one of that i will say commissioner for oath they are very cheaper guys so whoever certified your documents they must mention their license number as well as they their stamp as well as their signatures guys in a case you are unable to submit your passport or a birth certificate or your citizenship card like anything which support your uh, identification like you don't have anything then you need, need to make a make an affidavit either before a notary public commissioner for oath or a lawyer so that every affidavit must mention your name as exactly mentioned on your degree transcript or a licensing statement along with your date of birth yes guys any affidavit you make you must submit the original one it should not be the copy of the affidavit the copies only uh, are accepted for your degree transcript or the licensing statement Yes, you have to provide the reason also in the affidavit that why you are unable to provide the documents. So guys, when you submit the next step is when your instructions for submitting university degree certificate. So you must submit the copies but they must be certified guys must be certified so you just can't make the copies and just submit to the pvc so this degree the degree you must be certified uh, certified by the one of the witness the same the one degree which is gonna hang which is you gonna hang on your wall once you become the pharmacist so important thing guys here your transcript 
and the licensing statement must be sent to a PBC directly by your university or a college. They can send either by mail or an email. Yes, guys, you you don't have to send them the original ones. You just need to send the photocopies with the certified. The original ones need to be submitted by the university or a college. So the issue date for the transcript must be within the one month of the date the PBC receive it. So for example, uh, if I if I'm a PBC and I receive your document today, it must be issued before uh, after twentieth January. So if 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 the college or university can't send our email or I mail it, you must be you must can pick from your university or a college your degree oh sorry your transcript that but the, make sure you need to care of one one of one thing that the sender address must be that of the university or a college it should not be from your it should not be your home address and these transcript must be in the sealed bag guys then only you can send to the pbc i think due to the corona they uh, introduce this op option email thing it's just i think because of corona if anything you your university or college they can't uh, mail it they can use the email option yes guys so pbc have the right to verify the information that you provided so always provide the right information guys always right information so for example in special case if you're from germany then the whole procedure is different it must have a certified copies from three stages your examination center and your university then the next is your licensing statement guys so if you're currently licensed anywhere then you need you need to ask your licensing authority that they have to either mail or email your licensing statement to the pbc directly guys make sure they directly email or mail to the pbc you can't email or mail on your basis so your issue date for the licensing statement must be within the one month it is same like the transcript guys So, for example, in a case your document evaluation take more than uh, six months, then you need to submit your doc uh, licensing statement again. If it takes only, if it takes more than six months, yeah, guys, like same same thing we did with the transcript. They can either mail or email, but they need to do do uh, directly to PVC. You should not be involved in this thing. This is very important step, guys. Most important as well as the challenging step, guys. I will definitely say. This is a step where it takes a longer time. Yeah, guys. So either they can mail or email. Email to de submit at pbc.ca. So guys, in a case you are belonging to one of that country that the listed there, Iran, Israel, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, then you have to ask uh, either your Ministry of Health or our Medical Council to send the, your licensing statement straight to the PBC. Guys, in a case, if you have been licensed in the past but not in the present, still you need to ask the licensing authority to email or mail your past licensing record to the pbc sorry guys yeah they also must directly email or mail to the pbc 
Thus, this is very important step. Like your transcript as well as the licensing statement, it need to be straightly delivered by the your university or a college. Guys, in a case you are not licensed anywhere, like anywhere in the world, then you need to make the affidavit, like the declaration in front of the notary or the commissioner of oath, which in which you will state that okay you're not licensed anywhere in the world and you need to submit this the original affidavit to the pbc so you can you can mail with your application to the pbc in a case if you're not licensed anywhere because always provide the exact correct information because the pbc can verify your information also In some special cases, they ask you to submit a syllabus. You don't have to submit unless it is requested by PBC. Basically, they only ask for syllabus only when they have a doubt on your documents, I will say. But a 99% they will not ask you. But if they ask you, then you need to provide the whole syllabus, like what you what you did during your when you, what you learned during your pharmacy. It's only a special request by PBC. So guys, once you did everything, just make sure you check the checklist. Then you have to mail to this following address, the PBC address. For example, if you miss anything, then the PBC is going to email you to submit a certified, doc uh, certified documents again. So always check your email. So the PBC Examine Board of Canada address is 717 Church Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So guys, once you submit everything, it's going to take 8 weeks to uh, for a PBC to decide if your documents are original or fake. Yeah, it's a long procedure guys, so if you're planning to do a validating exam then within the next six months then you need to start from right now you need to collect your documents everything like really in advance because it's a lengthy procedure guys so i will say it will take three months from document collection to submitting to pbc because pbc itself take eight weeks so guys if you're planning to applying for a permanent residency through express entry or the federal skill work yes guys sorry to mention once you pay the fees it's not refundable once the fees is gone it's gone simple as that guys so therefore all ways do everything properly so yeah in case you're uh, you're gonna apply for a pr on the basis of express entry or a federal skill worker program you need to uh, submit a separately request form with us. Uh, it's not mandatory, but I always say just submit this form to PBC along with your application because by that time it's free. That's, they're not going to charge you anything extra. Yeah, guys, it, it really helps you. I always say just fill this form. It's a very simple form. It, they don't ask you anything specific they just ask you like a basic information and it's moreover it's free and it is valid for a five years guys so you must fill this form guys in a case you don't fill this form and for example you did the you passed the document evaluation the last year and after one year you want your uh, this ECA report then you need to pay them extra $100. Yeah, so if you have already passed your document evaluation, but still, uh, and afterwards you need the ECA report, you need to fill this form and you need to pay them a separately $100. So that's why I always say fill this form with your application. Yeah. There you're gonna see ECA report request hundred dollars. Yeah, guys, this is only when you want your ECA report after one year or two year. 
so always fill with the your application because it's a valid for uh, five years yeah guys that's it so you did everything proper you hopefully you watch this video you find it interesting hopefully i answer your all questions but still if you guys want uh any comment or suggestion please let me know thank you